What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Dr. McIntosh with Health and Performance Center. I uh, just wanted to hop on here and drop a video about an injury I just had. I strained my calf. Yes, I strained my calf. I went out running the other day. I was doing a two-mile loop. I went out in the morning, uh, it was on a Saturday morning, I think, and I uh, went out pretty dehydrated, um, strained my calf, felt it pull immediately when it happened, tried to stretch it out, you know, push on it so I could finish the run, it just kept getting tighter and tighter, wouldn't happen. So, strained my calf, guys. So, what am I going to do to get back, because i got to keep training uh, for this half marathon? Well, one... Yeah, that's my injury right there, two miles in, immediate pull. Uh, one is I need to sort of figure out what's going on so I can make a plan to uh, to fix this. So I rested up over the weekend, and now I'm here I am in the week. So it, the pain is right in that red circle. It's kind of the calf, kind of the soleus area, myotendinous junction of the calf maybe. Uh, and basically, when my foot is fully dorsiflexed, uh, so there's a stretch on the calf, if this is my calf. I try to push off, there's a pretty intense pain and a pulling in that in that location. Uh, that's, that's where I'm at so far. I tried to do a further examination here. I did some body weight calf raises on both feet. No pain, clearly that, uh, that stimulus was not too much for me. I did them on one foot. Uh, mild discomfort in the stretch position, like I said before. Uh, when I do it on one foot with the knee bent, that's where I feel the crazy intense pain, that pulling sensation. Uh, when the knee is bent, there's more of a pull from the soleus in the ankle. So that's why I'm kind of leaning uh, soleus, but I'm not really ruling anything out. Um, when I do isometrics, I kind of just hold uh, on one leg, on my right leg, at the angle that uh, that it hurts. I hold that for about 30 seconds. It actually kind of, kind of, it becomes manageable. So that's interesting. Um, and I have no tolerance to rapid loading plyometric style things. I stepped off of a step real fast the other day and it hurt like heck. Anyway, so tendon or muscle, what do you do? Well, it's a little different. Tendon, uh, one, one uh, big person in the tendon world is Jill Cook. She's kind of the queen of tendons, if you will. Uh, she kind of has done a whole bunch of research on it. And here's a good article if you guys want to look this up. How do tendons adapt? Basically, there's a chart here. There's the green, which is good. The red, which is bad. Think your current load is where you are right now. What you're doing for your training right now. For me, my current load, because I injured myself, was in the red. So I kind of x uh, There's a red X there. I overloaded something and injured my calf. So I have to not only do the most important thing, which is um, back off the load a little bit, but I need to go back to where the green is because when you get injured, you lose your tolerance to, to loading. So I need to go backwards in terms of load and hopefully stay right in the area of the, of the green. And one thing I, I highlighted here, the, on the left side of that graph, if you can see it, it, it says stress deprivation. When you injure something, if you do nothing, that is worse. If you see, nothing is, is almost entirely in the red column. Do not do nothing after an injury. If this is a muscle strain, it's a true muscle strain, it's again gonna be slightly different than that. I've highlighted some things here. I'm out of the, uh, the picture right above my head is the first stage, acute management, first two to three days. Um, there's kind of two uh, concepts here, the uh, PRICE protocol and the POLICE protocol, just acronyms, you know, uh, protection, uh, ice compression, elevation. The only difference between PRICE and POLICE is the optimal load, right? You do not want to do nothing. You want to move it around. Uh, at that stage, what I was doing was one thing that I highlighted, which is manual therapy, basically pushing on it, doing some light massage work and using a low intensity uh, laser on it. I'm now in the sort of second stage, about a week after, or excuse me, three days to a week after I uh, started training. I have, uh, I'm gonna go forward and then back here. 
I've been doing some slow eccentric training. So I'll go up to the top of a calf raise and very slowly go all the way down about six to eight seconds. I've been combining that with a bunch of lightweight high rep sets, pump some blood into the area. It's good for hypertrophy. Uh, and I'm really hammering the, uh, the red light. I'm doing everything possible to, uh, to help this thing heal. Uh, as I move forward, basically I'm just going to increase the load until I can tolerate running again, uh, which running is like a repeated plyometric. It's, t it's uh, tendon energy storage type things where you, where you uh, have a lot of stress on the, on the tendons. Um, after that, uh, it's just increased load again. Once I can run pain free, I'm just going to slowly ramp my running back up um and get back to training uh one last point guys if you hurt something get it evaluated make get a plan made and do not rest you have to do as much as you can at your current tolerance level uh, and slowly increase that stay tuned guys for a uh, video of exactly what i'm doing training wise uh, to heal from this thanks for watching